Here at Crosstalk Solutions, we used to sell Unify video surveillance systems. We would build all of the server components together and then sell a bunch of cameras and ship it off to customers. Now we have since stopped doing that, but while we were selling Unify video surveillance systems, the G3 bullet camera was by far the most popular camera that we sold. I mean, we sold the G3 bullet probably five times more than any other camera, including the dome camera or any of the pro series or anything like that. And I mean, we literally sold hundreds of these G3 bullet cameras. They are absolutely spectacular, great little cameras, almost bulletproof, not literally bulletproof, but like this one, for instance, you can see is all discolored because it was sitting outside directly in Oregon weather elements for more than two years. And this thing still works great. So this was always our go-to camera. Well, now Ubiquiti has just come out with the new version of the G3 Bullet. This is the G4 Bullet camera. And this makes some significant upgrades to the old school G3 Bullet. But hopefully it's still the same solid, reliable camera that the G3 Bullet was. Okay, so let's get this thing unboxed and let's talk about some of the specs of this new camera. The first and probably, I don't know, most important spec, but it's definitely a, uh, a really important upgrade, is that this camera is now 1440p uh, resolution as opposed to the G3, which was only 1080p resolution. So the resolution on the G4 Bullet is 2688 by 1512, 16 by nine resolution. And just look at how, oh boy, right off the bat, it's much heavier than the other camera. Um, so just look how beautiful this is. They've got this nice blue Ubiquiti logo on the side. Uh, it looks to be approximately the same size as the G3 Bullet, maybe just a tiny bit bigger, but the weight of it is much more significant. And that is because on the G3 bullets, you had a plastic coating, okay? So this is sort of a polycarbonate exterior, whereas one of the new upgrades to the G3 bullet is that it is now an aluminum alloy enclosure, right? So some of the pieces are still plastic, right? So like the connector pieces back here, this piece uh, that sort of tightens everything up is actually aluminum alloy, and the body, the casing of the camera itself is aluminum alloy. Looks like they've got a little covering on the ethernet port back here. Let's go ahead and pull that off. Oh, and it ripped, what a rookie. So besides the camera in the box, we have the back plate. This is for mounting it to a pole. We have a couple of screws. We have the same sort of rubber grommet that you're gonna stick the network cable through in order to ensure that it remains weatherproof. And then a silica gel packet, and that's it. So not much to this camera. It is powered by 802.3 AF PoE. Uh, whereas the old camera, the G3 bullet, could be powered by, actually this one was 24 volt only. This was a very, very old model. But the newer G3 bullets, uh, such as this one here, this could be powered by either 802.3 AF or 24 volt passive PoE. Ubiquiti has been moving away from the 24 volt passive PoE model. Most of their stuff now is 802.3 AF, and so this camera as well can only be powered by 802.3 AF. It does have a weatherproof enclosure that is IPX4 rated. So the ingress protection on this camera is IPX4. The X means that it's not rated for dust ingress, but it is rated for splashing water. That's the four of the IPX4. Basically, this thing can be directly out in the rain and have you know water splashing on it, no problem, but you wouldn't wanna submerge it in water because it's not protected for that. Interestingly, this now also has an impact protection rating of IK04, which I looked it up because I wasn't sure what that meant exactly, and it means that it is prote uh, protected from 0.5 joules of impact at 200 millimeters. So basically that means you can drop or have an impact of about a half of a pound object dropped from eight inches right onto it 
it's protected from that. And that doesn't seem like a lot of protection. I mean, like basically if you hit this thing with a baseball bat, you're gonna knock it down or damage it or whatever. But it seems like it can take some pretty light hits, like maybe some decent hail it can stand up to. I think that's kind of what they're, what they're telling us with the impact protection. But it's not gonna stand up to a human that wants to actually you know, damage the thing or, or you know, knock it down somehow more silica gel in there. The operating temperature of this camera is minus 20 degrees Celsius up to 40 degrees Celsius, which is uh, minus four degrees Fahrenheit to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And this camera is made for Unify Protect only. There is no Unify video support for the G4 bullet camera. Now, the base support for this thing that connects to the wall or connects to a pole and allows you to adjust the angle of the camera this looks like it is exactly the same as the one from the G3 bullet cameras. Uh, it might be a little bit bigger. Yeah, it might be a hair bigger, but essentially it's the same exact design as the G3 bullet cameras, because honestly, that design works great, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So this is uh, still the same uh, mechanism for getting it mounted to the wall or a pole or wherever you're gonna put it. All right, so enough about the camera itself. This is going to be going on the outside of my house. Again, it'll be under the eave of a roof, so it'll be slightly protected from the elements, but I'm not worried about the weather because I know how well the G3 bullet stood up to weather, and this thing is the same, if not a little bit better, in terms of weather protection. Uh, but we do wanna check out the picture quality and determine whether or not the MSRP price of this camera, which is $199, is worth $50 more than its predecessor, right? So the G3 bullet, 149 bucks, G4 bullet, 199 bucks. And really what you're getting for that extra 50 bucks is the aluminum alloy enclosure, uh, which offers, again, some higher level of impact protection than the plastic or polycarbonate enclosure, and then also the better picture quality. So, all right, I'm curious to see how this thing looks. Let's go ahead and get it set up. I'm gonna be adopting the G4 bullet over to my UNVR, but this is actually gonna be the same process pretty much regardless of which Unify Protect flavor you happen to be running, whether it's the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus or the UDM Pro. So here we go, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into PoE. And in just a moment, we're gonna see this camera pop up in the UNVR. However, if it doesn't pop up, you can always wait for it to boot up and then click Add Devices and it should find it that way, assuming that it's on the same LAN. Okay, so I've given it about a minute and we're gonna go ahead and click Add Devices. And right there it found the G4 bullet. So let's just go ahead and click Add Devices in the bottom right. And now it is successfully adopting the new G4 bullet camera. Once this blue light turns green, that means that we are online and ready to go. And then I'm gonna go and adjust a few of the settings for the G4 Bullet, basically to the way that I like to set up cameras in Unify Protect. Okay, Bullet has been set up. Let's click on our live view and make sure that everything looks like it's working just fine. It certainly does. All right, let's close this out and let's click on the camera and change a couple of the settings. So under General, I typically do the time and camera name and then turn off the logo uh, for the on-screen display of the camera. We're gonna set our recording quality all the way up to 24 FPS, but I'm gonna leave the bit rate at 3000. We're gonna apply that change. Then I come over here to recording, and we're gonna always record, but for motion events, I'm gonna do a two second trigger, and then five seconds before and five seconds after. We're gonna apply that change as well, and now this camera is all set up and ready to go. Okay, here we have a look at my test setup. I have the G4 bullet on top, the G3 bullet right below it, and then the G4 Pro camera on the very bottom. All of that is feeding into Unify Protect, and I have all three cameras up on the screen right here. I've also laid out a tape measure so that I can get various distances from these cameras. So let me start out by going about five feet out. And here we are at five feet away from the cameras. Now the first thing that you're probably gonna recognize is that the G4 Pro camera has a much wider field of view than the other two cameras, which look like they're about exactly the same. The other change that I made from when I was setting them up upstairs is that I set all three of these cameras to a bitrate of 6,000 kbps. 
Uh, that is the maximum that you can do on the G3 bullet camera. And uh, I just wanted them to basically all be the same. So we have the G3 bullet at 1080p, 30 frames per second, and 6,000 bit rate. Then we have the G4 bullet at 24 frames per second with a 6,000 bit rate, and then the G4 Pro at 24 frames per second, also a 6,000 kbps bit rate. Okay, so I'm going to try to get the audio that you're picking up from the G4 bullet as well, and now I'm going to step back another, ten, another 5 feet and see what it sounds like from there. Alright, here I am at 10 feet. We can hear it sounds probably a little bit quieter than it did before, but you should still be able to pick up the audio pretty clearly. I'm going to go all the way back to 20 feet, and then we'll see what it sounds like from there. Alright, here I am at the 20 foot mark away from these cameras, and I'm just speaking in a regular conversational tone, uh, and you should still be able to pick up the volume, uh, even though I'm 20 feet away from these cameras. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my Tesla and then pull it out so that we can see what it looks like when a car is driving by. testing of these cameras individually with the IR turned on. All right, time for some night testing. It is about 9.30 p.m. It's plenty dark outside, and uh, we're going to do a couple of tests here. First of all, we're going to try each of the cameras individually with their onboard IR. But then for the G4 Bullet, I also want to show you what kind of results you can get with an IR illuminator, which is an external device. I've done a video on it before. I'll put a link to it on the screen here. But basically, that's a way to supplement the IR with a much stronger set of IR LEDs. One of the things that Ubiquiti has now built into their camera settings is the ability to enable or disable the IR lights that come on with the camera. Or they have another option which allows you to enable IR, but don't turn on the onboard IR lights from the camera. So that basically allows you to easily facilitate an external IR illuminator, and we're gonna show you what that looks like. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at each of these three cameras individually with their onboard IR uh, LEDs. Okay, here we have the G4 bullet camera with its onboard IR LEDs. What I'm gonna basically do here is just kinda of take a walk around. I'm gonna walk down on the sidewalk and sort of walk in front so you guys can see just generally what it looks like when people are caught on this camera at night. And then I'll try to replicate exactly the same thing for the other two cameras and then we can sort of com contrast and compare uh, the results here. Okay, now we have the G3 bullet camera with the onboard IR only. The onboard IR on the G3 has always been not spectacular. That's why they had an IR extender and that's why I originally did the IR illumination video. So hopefully you can see that it's probably not as good as the G4 bullet, uh, but uh, we'll see after I review the footage at the end. Okay, let me do my little walk around so we can compare and contrast.
right, now we have the G4 Pro camera with its onboard IR LEDs. Uh, let me do my walk around and then we can uh, see what that looks like as well. All right, here is the G4 bullet camera without any IR whatsoever. Let's go ahead and flip on the onboard IR. There we go, you can see I am now lit up. Now we're gonna set it on auto without LEDs and then we're gonna turn on the external IR illuminator. All right, here we are with the IR LEDs turned off on the G4 bullet, but turned on on the external illuminator, which is sitting about six inches above that G4 bullet. Let me do my circuit one more time so that we can compare what it looks like with the external IR illuminator. Okay, finally back to the G4 bullet camera with just its onboard IR LEDs. And now we're gonna take all of this footage inside and sort of take a look at it. And uh, I'll give you some additional thoughts on the night vision as well as the different types of IR illumination. Let's take a look at some of our test footage, keeping in mind that this is processed through my computer, right? I'm downloading this footage from Unify Protect and then I am formatting it in Adobe Premiere Pro and then uploading it to YouTube in 1080p. So it's not really the best comparison of actual footage, but you should be able to get some idea as to the picture quality even through all of that sort of processing. Another thing is I'm taking these images from Unify Protect, these videos, and I'm putting them side by side. But like if you put a you know, 4K resolution video side by side with a 1080p resolution video and you make them the same size, they look like they're the same size, but that's just me resizing it to make it easier for you guys to watch on YouTube. So let's start out with what these actual resolutions look like. So here we have myself, let me hit play here. So here is an example of the actual resolutions that we're dealing with. This is a comparison of the G4 bullet, you can see this inner square here, versus the G4 Pro, right? So this is the resolution difference between 4K and 1440p. And we're gonna also toss in the G3 bullet here in a second. But right off the bat, you can kind of see the difference as far as the field of view as well as some of the color saturation. So for instance, the colors on the 4K look much clearer than the colors on the G4 bullet. Not to say that the bullet is a bad picture quality, but when you're comparing a $200 camera versus a $450 camera, I would certainly expect that the $450 camera has a much better picture. So now here we have that same view, but side by side, okay? And you can see here, not only the difference in terms of the field of view, uh, again, the 4K camera is just such a wide field of view compared to the G4 bullet, but here we can actually see some of the differences in color. The 4K view is much more saturated, which by the way, you can adjust the saturation on these cameras if you want. Uh, but this is just the default settings that I'm using for these cameras. So here I am now standing 10 feet away from the camera and the G4 bullet actually does have a pretty nice picture and it also has a decent field of view, especially when compared to the older model G3 bullet. Let's take a look at that now. Here we go. So here is the overlay of the G3 bullet at 1080p 
with the G4 Bullet behind it with the G4 Pro 4K behind that, okay? So now you can really see, okay, so now I'm standing at 20 feet away from the cameras. Now you can really see the difference as far as field of view. Like watch this car go by here. And that car was on the G4 Pro camera like well before it was on either of the other cameras. So this is the view of all three so you can get an idea as to the different actual resolutions. But now let's take a look at the G3 specifically, the G3 bullet versus the G4 bullet. And here you can see both of these cameras side by side. As far as picture quality, they honestly look about the same in the daytime. Like I'm not seeing too much that I can pick apart. There's a few color differences, but they're about the same sort of sharpness. They're pretty close in terms of field of view. Obviously the 1440p uh, video is a little bit of a bigger field of view than the G3 bullet. But like daytime quality wise, to me, they're about the same. So really what that leaves us is what are these cam what are the differences in these cameras uh, at night or for the night vision IR stuff. And so here we have another view. This is nighttime of the G4 bullet versus the G4 Pro. Uh, and both of these are just using the onboard IR. Uh, one thing to keep in mind also is that these were shot separately, right? So I only had one IR on at a time so that I wasn't like blasting two cameras worth of IR, which would kind of skew the results of this side-by-side -side comparison. But for this night footage, you can see pretty clearly, and here's where I'm going to sort of do my walk around, right? You can see pretty clearly that the G4 Pro night footage is much, much clearer than the G4 bullet, but you can also still kind of see that there's someone walking by. Now, whether or not, let me pause it right there. Let me scooch that back a little bit and pause it. All right, so look right here. So here's the thing, right? This, this G4 Pro camera, again, $250 more expensive than the G4 bullet, but it is so clear, like you can literally see the Big Dipper constellation in the nighttime sky, even with the IR on and with all these other like housing lights and stuff. It is just such a clear picture. I love that G4 Pro. Now you look at the differences in terms of, would I be able to recognize someone at this distance, which this is about 25 feet away from the camera. So here you can certainly tell obviously that there's someone walking by on the G4 bullet camera, just like you can tell that there's someone walking by on the G4 Pro. The G4 Pro, however, is just such a clearer picture, but the wider field of view makes me look like I'm further away. So I really can't recognize someone at 25 feet with either of these cameras. Let me back that up and I'll show it to you one more time. Okay, so here we go. This is the two cameras side by side. And walking away again, as I walk across the field of view here, you're basically going to be able to tell that someone's walking by the camera. But if I didn't know who this was, I wouldn't be able to recognize them. Or I should say, even if I did know who this was, I probably couldn't recognize them. All right, now we have the G4 bullet versus the G3 bullet. And again, right away, you can see that when I'm standing close to the camera, so this is, you know, both of the onboard IRs for both of these cameras. When I'm standing close to the camera, the picture's okay. Like right here, in, in this case, I'm about five or six feet away from the camera. But here's the difference. The G3 bullet with its 1080p and sort of like weaker IR, look at this. As soon as I step further back, look how much darker the G3 bullet is. And then when I do my walk across the screen here, you're gonna see that like, it looks like a ghost is walking across the G3 bullet camera. Like you cannot even tell, it almost doesn't even look like a person. There's so much sort of ghosting in the picture that again, it just like, by the time I'm there, it's, it's, it's like watching ghost adventures on, on one of those you know cable television shows where it looks, just looks like a overexposed picture or something. So not great night vision quality for that G3 bullet. So just right there, hold up, let me pause it again. Just right there is a very significant difference between the G4 bullet and the G3 bullet. The G4 bullet's nighttime IR is 
significantly better than the G3 Bullets nighttime IR. So again, you gotta you know compare that with the price, right? 149 bucks for the G3 Bullet, 199 bucks for the G4 Bullet, but the G4 Bullet, way better night vision, and it has that aluminum alloy enclosure, which is a little bit more robust than the G3 Bullet. Is it worth the extra 50 bucks? I would think that it is uh, in terms of just what we're seeing right here. Okay, so let's move on to our next test. This is the G4 bullet with the onboard IR, so just using the IR uh, LEDs that come on the camera itself versus the same camera, but I'm using that external IR illuminator. So let's go ahead and start this footage here. And you can see that I'm standing a little bit further away in the external IR, but only by a few feet. And it's significantly brighter, not only on me, but also like if you look at these bushes over here on the left, like look how much brighter these bushes are over here. Uh, so this is a pretty interesting comparison. Now let me do my comparison where I actually walk by the camera and you can kind of see that there is a, a decent difference when you're using the, on, the uh, onboard IR versus an external IR luminaire. Like look how much clearer it is with the external IR. And here we go again, walking across. So let's pause right there. So look at the differences here, right? Again, this looks almost a little, like a little bit of ghosting. You can see kind of a lot of pixelation around me versus the same exact camera, but not using the onboard IR, using an external IR illuminator is much, much clearer and everything's much, much brighter in terms of like these bushes and just the driveway and everything looks a lot brighter. And that external IR illuminator is not expensive. I think it was like 35 or 40 bucks. All right, final test here. This is the G4 bullet with the external IR illuminator. So you're talking about a total of about, you know, just under 250 bucks versus just using the G4 Pro with its onboard IR. Uh, which would be about 450 bucks, okay? So let's look at this comparison. And you can see that both pictures are pretty clear, but in fact, using the external IR illuminator is actually a bit brighter on the background than, uh, than the onboard IR of the G4 Pro. And let's go ahead and do the, uh, the walk by. So I'm gonna wave my arms in the air and then we're gonna do our little walk by here so you can see. So again, let me pause it right there. Uh, you can see that it's pretty clear on both cameras. Like they're pretty similar in terms of the brightness and the clarity of this picture. Uh, but again, you do get a much wider field of view on the G4 Pro. So let's keep going. And final sort of walk by shot at about 25 feet pretty uh, like almost identical in terms of clarity. So that's a really interesting comparison, right? So an argument that could be made here is the G4 Pro with, versus a G4 Bullet with an external IR illuminator, right? So the like in terms of clarity and, you know, brightness of nighttime picture, to me they look almost about the same. The difference is going to be the resolution. Of course, the 4K has much bigger resolution. So if you're looking to like read license plate, I mean, it's not actually a license plate camera, but you would have better luck reading license plates with the 4K camera versus the 1440p camera. And also, of course, the 4K camera has this much wider field of view. You can see, for instance, my mailbox here, and then, you know, look how much further it goes over versus the G4 bullet, which cuts off right about in the middle of this bush here. All right, so there you go. There's the G4 bullet and comparing it to the G3 bullet as well as the G4 Pro. What do you guys think about this camera? Put it down in the comments below. Me personally, I actually really like the G4 bullet, but if you're gonna be doing a situation like this where you want it on the front of your house or something like that, again, I would have to say get an external IR illuminator and then set the G4 bullet so that it automatically flips into nighttime mode, but it does not use the onboard IR lights of the G4 bullet. You're gonna get a much better, clearer picture when you have it set up in that configuration than when you don't. Plus, 
One of those external IR illuminators could actually be good for multiple cameras, depending on where you put the illuminator and where you put the cameras. All right, I'm gonna put a link to all of this stuff down in the description, including the external IR illuminator. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.